What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna go over five tips, five secret tips to get better at surgery. Nobody's teaching you this, nobody's telling you these things. I'm telling you now, let's get into it. What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD. If you're new to the channel, I'm a first year oculoplastic surgery ASOPERS fellow, doing my fellowship, two year fellowship in ASOPERS. I finished ophthalmology residency, now I'm doing a oculoplastics fellowship. And if you're new, we focus on everything about medicine, residency, ophthalmology most specifically, oculoplastic surgery, and me helping you guys get through medicine, get through residency with tips, tricks, knowing what to expect. That's what the channel focuses on. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, go ahead, subscribe to the channel down below. And if you guys get any value from this video, please leave a like on it and subscribe to it, all that good stuff. What I wanna go over in this video are the five tips that you can use to improve at surgery. In ophthalmology, surgery is a huge part of what we're doing. Most of us went into ophthalmology because we wanted to do surgery. We wanted to operate on people. I wanna give you some tips to make you a better surgeon. And this isn't stuff that you're probably getting taught in your residency, by your mentors, by your attendings. These aren't things that are often explicitly said to you. The good surgeons, I think, focus on these things. If you do these things, if you at least become mentally aware that these are things you could focus on and practice, I think you'll get better. To put this in perspective, for me, as a third year ophthalmology resident, doing operations, doing lots of cataract surgery, Using these tips, doing these five things, helped me to progress a lot faster than I think I would have otherwise. It allows you to get more out of what you're doing. So two people can go and do the same amount of surgeries, but depending on how you approach them, what your mindset is, what your prep work is, you can get two vastly different surgical educations based on how you kind of just approach the surgeries. Keep these in mind, let's get into them. All right, the first tip that I think will make you a better surgeon is attention to detail. So I see a lot of times with younger surgeons that are just just starting out doing their first surgeries, whether it be cataract surgeries or whether they're coming on our oculoplastic surgery rotation and they're doing some oculoplastics for the first time, the attention to detail isn't there. And that's understandable because you don't necessarily know what to look for in the beginning. What I would do when I was doing cataract surgery and now with oculoplastic surgery is I find the best surgeon, the best attending, the best whoever, whether it's on the internet, somebody on YouTube, whatever, I find whoever is the best and I pick apart their surgery. I micro analyze their surgery. So when it's one of my attendings, my really good attendings that's operating, I watch how they hold things. I watch exactly which forceps they're holding. I watch how they're holding them. I watch which finger they're putting through the scissors. I watch which direction the scissors are facing. When we're starting a bleph incision, we're holding the Stevens tenotomy scissors. I watch which way the curve is facing. I watch how they cut, how far they cut. I micro analyze, I pick apart every little thing they're doing because they're not doing it for no reason and they do it every time. And so there's a reason that they're doing these things. So when you watch surgeries on YouTube, when you're watching somebody else do it, don't just sit there and kind of observe passively. Look at exactly what they're doing and pick it apart and figure out the reasons of why they're doing things. This is stuff that I would do when I would watch Cataract Coach. As a third year resident, I would watch his surgeries and I would just pick them apart. Every little movement, I'd put them on quarter speed. I'd put his surgeries on quarter speed and I would just watch the movements in slow, fine detail to figure out exactly what he's doing, exactly how he's doing it. Because this is surgery, guys. You need to pick it apart down to that level. Don't be cavalier with it. Don't be superficial with it. Don't be surface level with it. Pick this apart down to the minute details and that'll make you a better surgeon. The devil is in the details. It's a cliche, but it's true for surgery. The second tip is to visualize. So this means that you need to visualize the surgeries before you ever Ever do them. I used to lay in bed at night before cataract surgeries and do them in my mind, step by step. I would imagine how my hands were gonna move. I was gonna imagine how the tissue was gonna react. I was going to do it all in my head 10 times before I ever sat down and tried to do it physically for real on the day of surgery. There is value in that. There is something to visualizing it and seeing yourself doing it. It actually will make you so much better. Trust me on this. Athletes do this. Olympic athletes do this. Larry Bird did this. He used to imagine playing basketball games hundreds of times before he ever stepped on the court. Visualize the surgery. Visualize you doing the surgery. Imagine yourself doing it. It will make you better. All right, the third tip is to practice. This one should go without saying, but a lot of people show up 
to the OR their first time and they haven't really done much practice. It can be tough to practice surgery just by the nature of what it is. Fortunately for ophthalmology, we have things like the IC simulator that allow us to actually practice surgery on a simulated robotic eye with, with a heads up display that allows us to see kind of a simulation of cataract surgery. So practice there. For oculoplastic surgery, it's practicing suturing, it's practicing holding the instrument. For me, I buy needle drivers, I buy scissors, I buy pickups. I have them all around my house, I have them in my car, I keep them in my hands, I move them through my hands. That's practicing, guys. That's getting familiar with the instruments, making them an extension of your own body so that they are more natural when you get into the OR. For cataract surgery, what I used to do, when I first started doing cataract surgery, the thing that gave me the most trouble was making the rexus and making that subincisional turn with the rexus, with the utrata forceps, redirecting the direction of the forceps. That gave me a ton of trouble, rotating those utrata forceps in my fingers to make that turn. And so I bought utrata forceps on Amazon, eight bucks, 10 bucks, something like that, cheap little ones. And I would just practice rotating, I'd practice that movement, not in the OR, just at home, practicing that movement over and over and over until I was able to do it in the OR. So practice guys, pick apart your surgeries, find the parts where you're weak, and you can just practice doing the little movements at home. It doesn't have to be complicated, just get some reps in. That brings us to the fourth tip, which is you need to be mentally plastic when you're in the operating room. A lot of us go into the OR with a plan, which is good. We wanna have a plan in mind of what we're gonna do, but you need to have the ability when things don't go as planned to improvise and be creative and kind of switch gears and be able to see a problem that's occurring in real time because I'll tell you, when something like that happens in the operating room, when something doesn't go as planned or something is starting to become a complication, your ability to stay calm, keep your cool, and then figure out a solution in the moment is a huge, huge part of being a good surgeon, and it's something that's not easy to teach. But the first thing you should do anytime something like that happens is breathe, check your own heart rate, and then kind of analyze the situation, don't panic, tell yourself what's going on and then find a solution. But you can't be too rigid in your thinking. You can't get flustered when things don't go exactly as planned. You need to be mentally plastic. You need to have the ability to come up with a creative solution at the time of the surgery, even if it wasn't something you've planned. That is a huge advantage in surgery is the ability to be creative and improvise. All right, and the fifth step is repetition. Now this is something that just comes with time is getting the reps in with surgery. Getting the reps in is gonna make you a better surgeon. In residency, there's often this taboo around these guys that are called cataract cowboys that go out and just do 20, 30 FACOs in a day and they're just churning through cases and doing so many cases. And I always found that to be a little weird as a resident how that was kind of looked down upon in the academic setting as these private practice guys that are just doing so many cases. To me, I always thought if you could go do so many cases and do them well, you were gonna be a better surgeon. Personally, if I was having my cataract surgery done, I want the guy who's done 10,000, 15,000 cases doing my surgery because I know that he's gonna have the reps in He's gonna have the experience. To give a brief little parable, there's a story called the parable of the pots where an art teacher kind of divides his students into two halves and one half of the class is tasked with making 50 pots, 50 clay pots, pottery wheel pots uh, by the end of the semester and they'll be graded on their ability to make those 50 pots whereas the other half of the class each student just has to make one pot and then they'll be graded on the quality of that pot. At the end of the semester, the students in the group that had to make 50 pots ended up making the better quality pots, even better than the group that just had to make one single pot that was judged on its quality. So, so the message here is that through volume, through repetition, you make mistakes, you fail, and then you get better. You gotta get the reps in, you gotta do it, you gotta do lots of surgery to get good. All right guys, those are my five tips to get better. To recap, pay attention to detail, pick apart the people that you're watching do surgery, the people on YouTube, pick it apart down to the detail, figure out what they're doing, and then mimic it. Visualize your surgeries, practice them in your head before you go do them. Practice your surgeries, whatever that means for your surgeries, whether it be on the IC, or whether it means practicing suturing or just holding instruments in your hand. Remember to allow yourself to breathe and to be creative and mentally plastic. Lastly, get the reps in. You gotta hammer through it. You gotta do a lot of it to ever get good at it. Guys, those are my five tips to make you a better surgeon. Keep these in mind when you're going through residency, when you're going through your training, and even when you get out after training, 
keep these things in mind. Surgery is not showing up to the OR and trying to do it on the day of surgery and hoping it's gonna go well and that you're gonna be good at it. That's not the case. There's a lot of mental prep work, there's physical prep work. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you need to consider to be a good surgeon. Guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave a like on it, I would appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.